know, we're Kat and Nat, and this is the Mom Truth Podcast, and we're so excited to have both of you on here. I wish we could see them at the same time, but I can only see one. Wait, maybe if I swipe. And usually, oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Usually, we're um, like not a PG podcast, but since this is somewhat. a uh, 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 promotion for a child, a children's show, we won't go to where we usually go, which is usually massively inappropriate. So no. we'll stick with. Yeah. We don't oh. mind that one bit. Look, I don't, oh. I don't know how many preschoolers are tuning into your show, but Not- the people who have access to the remote and the programming are the ones we want to get to because we want to make sure parents know this will as Jackie says, sneak teach your kids music education, but we can swear as, as or ask perverted questions. Oh, you guys want to. I love, I love that actually. So you guys are also best friends. Oh my god, it's true. But that unlike so- you guys, we're not in the same room, which is kind of weird planning. No. We just came here because usually we do it in the car, but it's a really hot day and we did not want to risk overheating the phone for this, which we do often during podcasts. So we're up in her daughter's room and we're just having a little catch up because I was away, but now we're together. Um, but you guys are best friends and you get to work together, which we have met so many like duos that have worked together over the years or started something and it doesn't work out. How, how was, how was working together on this, uh, this series? For you to- hey, I just want to thank you uh, ahead of time for your vote of confidence and letting us know that there's a pretty good chance this is going to fail. Um, Wait a minute. Look, I think there's two different types of friends, right? There's people that you like, and then there's people you have this trust factor. There's the people, those people might not have been the ones where like, I can call you to bail me out of jail. There is a- With you. What? Yeah. Oh, they are with you. With you. Yeah. yeah. So the, the friendship Jackie and I have um, has been over the span of almost 20 years. And it's also, it's very consistently evolving emotionally for us. Meaning like we're, we grow as people. She'll say to me like, you know what? This affects me differently. I don't want to do this. Or I, you know, when you do this X, Y, Z, or I say that to her, like there's, there's a growth factor that's very sort of AA-ish that's beautiful about our friendship. But, and this is the same reason I work with my husband so often. I like to work with people that I have a trust factor with, like really, could I do a trust fall with you? Not just do I enjoy your personality, we're friends, but like what it, what it creates in a business sense is this shorthand. And like, it's funny. Shorthand. What? I was just going to say shorthand. Yeah. Fareed Zakaria said this once where he was talking about the um, emotional capital that it has to be spent when you're working on Zoom, when there's a new team member and you have to be like, you don't see them at the office. You can't ask them about their family. So you have to do it via email. And that's weird, but you can't go right to them with project directions because you don't know them and you need to spend emotional capital, social capital with people. But Jackie and I have spent so much over the years. There's a trust factor that if she was, you know, I was, she had this idea, brought it to my living room. And and I was like, I can help you make this. Let me be the business part. Let me hook you up with a production company and a, and a network to make this. If she were to say, um, I really need holograms. I'd go, there's no way that's in the budget. We cannot do that. And she'd go, okay, trust you. I understand. And if, but if she said to me, I really need this aspect of music to be heard. We need to have this in the show. I'd go, I will go back to Amazon and Gamont and fight for you. Like there's a, there's just a trust factor that you don't need to talk everything into oblivion to make sure the Mm -hmm. other person is still on your team. Listen, we share an email and a bank account, and I don't even know the passwords to the bank account. I know that sounds so crazy and dumb. However, I'm like, that's her strength, not mine. She Wait a second. Have- that sounds exactly right. Excuse me for one second. Um, Kristen, about sharing the ba- sorry, lady, <laughs> about sharing the bank account. I was going to bring this up to you. Uh, <laughs> You know, thank you. This exact thing. I was just, um, I have a podcast right now called We Are Supported By, and we just, we're interviewing all of our heroes, um, my other friend Monica and I, and we interviewed Abby Wambach, and she was talking about the joy of women's soccer and how you, you don't do it by yourself. That's not how they train you. You train to, I don't need to do all of the things. I need to know my strengths, and I need to yeah. know her strengths. And when her strengths come up, I kick the ball to her. And that's like yeah. a great working friendship and relationship. Is that you? That's you two, obviously. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, like when we we knew what each of us was doing here. I mean, I think it's sort of there's a sort of a fun story in that um, I didn't even have 
the business acumen to bring this to Kristen as a business partner. I was like, Hey buddy, can you, can you get out of the way? I need to talk to Lincoln. And she was like three at the time and uh, her daughter. And I was like, um, Hey, can, can I, do, do you like this art? Do you respond to this music? And I was just asking her daughter because she was the only friend I had at the time with a kid. And I was making it, trying to make a kid's show. So I wasn't even asking Kristen to work with me. I was just like, hey, Lincoln, do you like this? Is this cool? And she told me, she was like, dude, she's nonstop singing the song. She's loving this. Like, what can I do to help? I can intro you to the right people. And I was like, okay, you can come back in the room now. What are you saying? And we ended up making the show together. Okay, let's talk about what the show is. It's called Do Re Me, and it's, it's exclusively on Amazon Prime. It is launching on September 17th. And um, you guys are both executive producers. And yep. you're both voices. Yep. Wow. Okay. That is exciting and amazing. And it's, you're so lucky you get to work together on it. But Jackie, the road to getting the yeses, it sounds like there was, you had a lot of like, it wasn't just really easy. We're just like, Hey, great, hey, Kristen. And Hey, let's just put this thing on air. And it'll just be like that because we know famous people or whatever. It was, it was a journey. Well, I mean, yeah, listen, to give you a tiny bit of backstory for me, I've been acting since I was nine. And then I was on a show called Glow when I was 36. So I had 27 years of just being like, can anybody hear me? Like just <laughs> truly just being like, I have a joke. Hi. And just being like, and I talked about it on Dax's podcast, actually, that like your perseverance, once you make it is so attractive. People are like, oh my God, good for you. But when you weren't successful, it was kind of like a little bit, it was like, oh my God, she's still trying to do this thing that no one's like giving her the green light for. So it's been a journey and do re me has sort of been a microcosmic version of that, but all the pluses and positives and love and joy that this business has to offer have been present in do re me because it wasn't easy and it was a long haul, but it sort of always rolled right? Like it always made sense. There were a lot of scares. There were a lot of times we didn't know what was going to happen, but it always rolled forward in a really gorgeous way that sort of was the opposite of the first many, many moons of my career. Well, I find that passion projects do. They roll forward mm -hmm. because the passion takes it somewhere because there's meaning behind it, right? So I've worked on a lot of projects that have just been entertainment based and then a couple that have been really passionate, like in The Good Place, there was like a mission of like teaching people philosophy behind it and how to be a good person. I saw immediately in this project that music education was being cut from public schools, which I find mm -hmm. unacceptable. There's so much science and data that tells us that exposing kids to music, it's why you play baby Mozart it exposes their brains, it, it, it implores their neuroplasticity to grow, it makes them better at math, at social skills, like all of these things that we just don't utilize. Because in America, we just kind of want a pill to cure everything. And it's like, no, we have all these things at our fingertips. Music brings people together. It also grows your brain. It has the ability to regulate your body when you're in a, a, a mood. It has the ability to change your mood. And having it um, on the air accessible for people was paramount. And seeing how we could make it as big as possible. And the goal wasn't really to like sell toys, but we were like, we need an app. We need, and that's why we need someone like Amazon, who is a great partner, because they can come out with that. So like, you know, you guys know when you have, like, you find a puzzle game on your phone and you don't feel guilty about handing it to your kid because you know they have to spell totally. it. It's like totally. best day of mothering ever. I'm like, I nailed it today. She'll have to spell cow, um, but she's on my mm -hmm. phone. So this is that, like, they're going to be able to make me, they're going to fall in love with the show and they're going to be able to make music and their brain is going to grow because of it. But Jackie labeled it this great thing called sneak teaching, which I love. Yes. Yeah. Well, we have seven kids between the two of us and we're no stranger. <laughs> too many kids. I, well, we, you know, it's too late just to second guess that, but yeah, we're like <laughs> overwhelmed over here, especially with, you know, being shut down for well, two years. No big deal. But, um, they, my five-year-old knows how to get to the Amazon Prime app. Like, like I don't know how to, she's like this. She, like, it's like, she knows exactly what to do, how to get in, how to sign in. So for parents to know that there's a show that's kind of vetted for them, it's so 
huge because we know, you know, when you can get behind a show that it's not YouTube because YouTube is going to like, uh, it hurts. It sounds like there's 10 more children in my house talking and screaming all over. And not only that, it's just a little dangerous. You can't really put the right guards up. And I talked to my kids about that a lot. I was like, I do not want you watching shows on YouTube. I would rather have you be watching a garbage entertainment show on something else. YouTube is just like, you know, I had friends who were Googling, um, roller coaster rides because they wanted to watch the perspective and the boys were loving it. And she, thank God, looked at the side of the computer and it was like decapitation on a roller coaster. Yeah. That comes up the fucking algorithm. Yeah. Like, uh, give me a break. Uh, and the pranks, they're like, D now go, you know, like drinks, dip your balls in soy sauce and see if you can ta taste it. And I'm like, no, we literally yeah, had it, to have it's a mess. It's a mess over there. But here's the thing is <laughs> Like, we're baby. trying to make it safer, but we're also sneak teaching. And the reality is there's a lot more depth behind this, I think, than I've ever. I mean, I've worked on a couple different other children's shows, but like the, the Jackie wrote 52 songs with Dave Shuler for this show. 52 original songs, but with the intent of like what would make Kristen, this is what she says, not want to put the television in the microwave. Yeah. Like, it's I mean, there's so many songs that you just can't get out of your head and you're so sick of them. The Jackie and Dave have been writing music for very famous artists that we've all heard of for years. Their hooks are really good. Everything is catchy, but they represented every type of music. So they're representing reggae, jazz, blues, um, 80s rock, country. Kids are learning about all of this and getting a full music education while also learning music theory. Like, just to, because I'm rambling, I'll just give you an example of like how we did this so people can practically understand it. So in every episode, there's an emotional lesson and a musical, um, a musical lesson because it's a genre and then a music theory lesson. So in the episode that Ray, Jackie's character, is um, running around trying to join a dance team, she's not resting and she's too fatigued and she is not sleeping. And the song is called Listen to Your Body when it's trying to talk to you. And it's a really great hook, but it has rests in it. Because in music theory, there are rests in the music. When you take your hands off the keys, when you stop strumming, when you stop singing, you'll look at music charts and be able to know what the rest is because of this song. But you're also knowing how to listen to your body. Hit us with the lick, Jackie. You gotta listen to your body when it's trying to talk to you, talk to you. Hey, you gotta listen to your body when it's trying to tell you something, trying to tell you something. I, I have that reminds me so much. I should sing that in my head before I eat dairy or fried food. <laughs> well, that's the same thing with me. It's like, I told Kristen this all the time. Like, I can't tell you how much I learned about myself watching this show because the little bird Ray is me. She goes too fast. She's insecure. She's not sure. She's not 100% sure of herself, but she's really loud and has a lot of bravado. So she looks like she is. So then her friends are really surprised when she actually is a little bit scared. And it's just all, I just got chills. And it's all these things that I, as a grown woman, am yeah. sort of like uh, healing. I mean, it's a little intense to say healing childhood trauma by making this show, but it's also true. Like as we were creating this, I was going, these are all lessons that I need to be reminded of and that absolutely children need to be learning i just got to we're, we're this is not a show of like did i lose my fairy princess wand and how do i find it no. and it's just like background noise that's not this show at all we our kids have learned um so much from tv and i i, I say that seriously because when you have seven children tv is quite a large part of your life like survival and uh sometimes they say things and we're on like how did you know that and it is often they well, our smartest actually has the most screen time yeah. our absolute but, but, smartest but he's been he's been tricked into learning a lot of things right he thinks he's being entertained but then he's actually learning but jackie you were a a, a child uh actor and you also happen to be a songwriter and a great singer. Like, how does that happen to people? Like all those things in she, one. Kristen's the same. They're like all the same. They Very all nice. Song. You know what's really funny? Um, it, it, like I was saying a second ago, life is really funny because it, it works for you when it's working. And yeah. other times you're just an out of work person who happens to have some skills in their skill set. And so I'm just really lucky right now to be, to have been able to create this show and bring my best friend on. And we're so 
it's just so hard not to sound soundbitey because we're just so genuinely excited about this and have literally had a mission from the beginning, which was like, get music and music education into the heads and hearts and hands, which is why the apps are so important and the toys and the games are so important, into these, give, give music to these kids who, I can't believe I'm saying this, aren't getting it in school. Yeah. Yeah. And I you know, we, guys, we have so many moms who listen to this podcast and, you know, your story will resonate with so many of them because often you have a child and you go into transition. Like you do, you do, you, like you said, you lose yourself. You don't have the confidence anymore. You kind of are known as a mom, no longer a person. You might have transitioned out of a job and they're sitting there being like, I don't know what to do with my life. And I, I'm not good enough to do anything. So every, your personal story is so I think important for women to hear as well, because I don't, I can't tell you how many women we talk to that don't believe in themselves enough to try mm-hmm. something because they, they just don't have the support. They often don't have a partner who's behind them, you know, cheering them on. And, and you know, so- sometimes it's a best friend that you need to mm-hmm. do along, you know, our community. And a, a little passion because like Jackie yeah. and I both know that we wouldn't truly, we would not be I would never have become an actor if I hadn't studied music ever. I wouldn't have become a human. Yeah, oh. it's impossible. But the but there's a reason that STEM changed to STEAM recently. Like science, technology, engineering, and math are vital for your brain, but they added art in there. Science, technology, engineering, art, and math. It's now STEAM. Like there's a reason for it, but we, for some reason, don't. It's the first thing we cut, but I mean, yeah. you can't change. There's so much regulation needed for people's like mental health now. Like you can't do a math problem and have a different outlook on life. No, like, I'm grumpy. I'm not like, oh, you know what I need to do? Some <laughs> addition, some division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure, it could, it could give you a boost of confidence if you're good at it, but like <laughs> you're good bad at it. At it whole nother topic but you can listen to a song like any of those women you were talking about you can pop on like some anthemic aretha franklin or something and maybe have yep. a gusto to go to a job interview it is a very powerful uh, music yeah but, Kat, I to your point cat to your point a second ago about um the moms listening i also just want to say this makes me kind of want to cry but I, this doesn't have as much to do with our show which is what we're here to promote but i just want to say this to all the moms listening we don't die when we're 40. We don't, we don't, we don't wither up and become California raisins who need to just like, I mean, I know myself, like I, I, I didn't find any success in my career whatsoever till my late thirties. And it just, it, it can happen at any time. And so for the people that need to hear it, try and make your thing because you have no idea who is looking and who's listening and what you're capable of unless you try to do the thing. And we obviously need to teach that to our children, but we yeah. also need to teach that to our friends and our friends who are moms who are like, well, I guess I'm just a mom now. And it's like, you still yeah. have dreams, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And we are like, what well, that's our whole community. And we often say, you know, judgment is someone else's issue and regret is yours. So, so many put, you know, people put judgment in the way and they stop what they're doing. And, but that just causes your own regret. So we try to say, let them judge, but don't hold, you know, don't have the regrets, be live your life, you know? So I, that we appreciate that Jackie so much of you putting that out there. Cause they need to hear it every chance mm-hmm. they forget, you know? Oh, right. Yeah, no, I know we all do, I guess, right? Every, every woman and person has some insecurities walking through life thinking everyone's looking at them, but they're too busy thinking about themselves of everyone looking at them and no one's looking at them. We just got to live our life, you know? Do you got to go? Okay, we have we have a um, a quick Q&A or like uh, raise your hand if um, for, for besties, right? For besties like okay. you two. Okay, would you- in England. Uh, would, sure. would you share a bed? As of course. Own bed. Like at a hotel. Like but at a hotel. Have, we have and we do it again. Of course. Many times. What do you mean? See, uh, we, we 28 years, best friend. We friends, need our own beds. Because I do things in the night that she does not <laughs> need to privy to. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean we don't regularly can... share a bed, but we like would and could and do. Yeah. No, I mean, like, yeah. if you, we, we will make sure that we, but well, we've often had two rooms where we go and travel, but we always want one room with two beds. That's yeah, what we do. We never want to be apart, but we like to be in this, you know, cause it's more fun as a sleepover. Got it. Uh, 
who's more likely to get through building um, an IKEA set? Oh, Jackie, for the win. Well, I, know. I did just build, I'm calling it the piece. It's I, I believe it was labeled as a shed, but I did build a piece for about three hours outside that I have been talking nonstop about. I'm very proud of, and there's only one screw missing, but I kind of find that to be <laughs> more of a piece. Charming. It's like, yeah, it's it's charming. It's like, when's it gonna fall down? Is it gonna yeah. fall down? Yeah. yeah. When's the other shoe gonna drop? We love that about our shelving units. <laughs> <laughs> I I build well. I guess th this is a, a definitely a both because when I was a kid, my mom was big on um, big flag, big bra burning, flag waving feminists, and she was very into like. I remember my dad was away and he came home and we like ordered and built him a computer desk and all this stuff. Like when I was a kid, so my mom always really instilled in me: build your own stuff if you can. Yeah, so I'll I'll then I'm okay. gonna let Jackie take that one. If we have to have okay. a winner, it'll be Jackie. I'm good at choosing the right friend to build it for me, but I'll be there cheerleading. You need another glass of champagne for a second, whatever you need to peel off. Go ahead. Okay, which one of you would be Gail and who would be Oprah? I mean, obviously, Katie's Oprah. Get a grip. She's an action <laughs> mogul. Get a grip. Are you okay. joking? Would Gail, yeah, Gail, see, Oprah's Veronica Mars and Gail guest stars. We okay. get it. Kristen, I mean, okay. Kristen's Oprah. I Jackie but now Gail's got her own show and she's doing her, she's doing her own. So thing. does Jackie, bitch. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who would be the one to get arrested? But Gail has her own show because of Oprah and I have my own show because of you. Oh, that's good. See, so you, need, you need, it. it's a, it's a partnership. They're not there. And you, when we went to see Oprah, Oprah said, I, I don't need therapy because I have Gail. I would mm. need that. So, you know, you need one's not better than the other. They're just two different things. Right. What do you think you are? Every day it changes. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I was like, if you've been secretly no, thinking no, no. you're one of them no. the whole time, I just, uh, Wait, would, would you laugh when the other one fell or would you be like, are you okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I would say, are you okay? Because I do not like it when I trip and people laugh. I get very okay. angry. That's fair. She laughs every time. I think it's a funny when people fall. Oh, I can't. Yeah, there's same. I think it's great. If it <laughs> by the way, I do too when it when I'm watching it on TV. But if I'm in the same room as them, I'm such an empath that I like immediately absorb like the pain in their knee, and I have to be like, "Are you okay?" And that's what yeah. I want when it's in the room because, like, as an empath, I can't really distinguish between my emotions or or your emotions if we were in the same room. Now, if you're talking about like America's Funniest Home Videos where people are tripping and slipping, I'm all for that. You guys, I have to oh. tell you something, and it's not part of your Q&A, and it's really important. I just remembered. One time, I went to Kristen's house, yeah, and I was wearing, like, a long white sweater. And she knows what I'm about to say. And I was wearing a long right. white sweater, and it was nighttime. She <laughs> opened the front door to throw something out. She looked at me. She screamed blood-curdling screams, started hysterical crying, didn't even shut the door, and sat in a ball at the front door. And then I came running over and I was like, what just happened? What just happened? And she was like, I thought you were a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> but, but okay, to explain a little bit, I have an immediate reaction when I get scared or startled, I cry like on command. It, I can't control it. I hate it. It's so annoying, but like, don't pop outside the corner. For, like, you'll just make me cry. And I promise you'll feel awful. Crying. But like, when I open the door, oh my God, my heart came out through my butthole. And the reason she didn't shut the door is because then her brain recalibrated and she was like, oh, that's Jackie. But it, it was too late. She was crying and she was in a ball. And then I was like, what happened? What happened? And she was like, I was just watching this thing on TV and there was this ghost, there was this woman, this old lady in a white thing. And then you came in and I thought it was that. It was oh, just me, guys. What time of night it was? 8.14. I mean, <laughs> 2 a.m., get a grip. <laughs> Oh my gosh, well, yeah. she just literally did that to me. She's like, we're on the third floor and I'm coming up and calling her name. The door's closed. So I think, I don't know what she's doing, like keeping the kids and dogs out. And I open the door and she jumps out at me and I literally, like I scream so loud and I'm like, did, were you filming that? Like, were you trying to do like a prank? She's like, no, it was just for fun. I'm like, I literally almost shot my tampon right out of my vagina. Like I was just like, oh my God, thank you. Nice to see you too. We have to, we're told 
we have to wrap it up. You guys have been, oh, okay. they just said you have to wrap it oh, up. Oh, sorry. They didn't want to hear about that's gross. Yeah. I know. No. Do you okay. guys, you have to make sure everyone is listening to go to Do Re Me at, on exclusively on Amazon Prime. It starts on September 17th. There's, you're dropping six episodes, but there's a total of what, 52 Two? so far? I love it. I yeah. hate when no episodes, they give you five and there's no more. And the kids are like, oh, I have to wait 40 years for this. So, okay. We're so excited for this. Thank you Thank so you much. Girl. It was nice to talk to you gals. Congratulations.